Hey guys, what's up? I'm CJ and welcome back to my galaxy. Today we're talking about why Sejanus is better than Coriolanus Snow. This is more of a rant video today because when the prequel movie first came out, I realized that a lot of people were in love with Snow, Coriolanus Snow, because the actor was attractive or is attractive. So the lines kind of got blurred with what people were thinking about Snow and that they were forgiving him for some of his actions. No, not some. All of his actions which was rather unfortunate. Obviously a lot of people were talking about Snow at the time because it was very popular. The Hunger Games is very popular and of course lots of people were going to see it because they'd watched the original four movies and wanted to see the new one. Because it was so popular people found that it was very popular as well to say how attractive Snow is and then excuse all of his actions that he did throughout the series and specifically the prequel and the prequel book if some people had watched and read the book. Alongside this popularity of Snow and wanting to excuse his behaviours and his literal murders, people found that it was very popular and very fun to say that Sejanus is a bad character and he was stupid and basically was just a bad person. But now the dust has settled and it's not as much of a trend right now to be into the Hunger Games and watching it and talking about it. The fandom that was awoken by this trend has kind of been a left on its own now again. Whilst there's a lot more activity in the fandom because it's not as old technically now since there's a new prequel out, the dust settling means we can actually criticize the characters without people arguing that they're allowed to excuse Snow's actions because the actor is attractive. And I have nothing against Tom Blythe. Tom Blythe is a brilliant actor and he would not have been able to play Snow if he wasn't a good actor. I'm just saying, just because Snow's hot doesn't mean that he didn't murder a bunch of people. So we can finally discuss why Sejanus is actually a lot better than Snow and most of the other characters in the prequel. There are so many things that I could talk about Sejanus. Sejanus is my literal favourite character from the prequel and is has a lot of parallels with Katniss Everdeen specifically in the same way. Lucy Gray and Peter Malak have a lot of similarities and parallels. I know a lot of people compare Lucy Gray and Katniss but I personally think Lucy Gray is like Peter. Katniss is like Sejanus, which means that Sejanus just was in the wrong place at the wrong time during the events of the prequel because he had those same attributes that Katniss has. And now that a lot more people aren't talking constantly about Snow, a lot of the fandom is also agreeing that Sejanus is a very good character and has a lot of characterization and isn't actually as stupid as people made him out to be when the prequel movie came out. I'm going to be making a different video at some point comparing Sejanus and Katniss, so I'm not going to get too into their, compar their similarities and comparing them just yet. However, Sejanus, like Katniss, stood up to a lot of authority figures in Pan Am. Sejanus, in particular, in his own story, stood up to Dr. Ghoul. And this was when nobody else would stand up to Dr. Ghoul at all. Yes, they had their opinions. There are some other mentors that were working with Snow and Sejanus that definitely didn't agree with the games themselves. But they weren't so passionate about it that they were going to do something about it because they still were very capital and they thought that the districts were below them. It takes a lot of guts to be able to stand up to someone like Dr. Gaul. So Sejanus had a lot of confidence standing up to Dr. Gaul. Snow himself never stood up to Dr. Gaul. In fact, he was very submissive to Dr. Gaul and eventually became her apprentice because he, even in his inner monologue, he was saying how terrified of her he was. Even if Sejanus himself was terrified like Snow told the audience that he was. Sejanus still stood up to Dr. Ghoul, making him a better person than Snow. Snow originally had his reservations about the games, although obviously he eventually changed his mind because it helped him climb the ranks. Sejanus understood the reservations that Snow had as well, and Sejanus would talk about it just openly, although once again, Snow was not going to do that because he was trying to rise up the ranks, and he was trying to stay in the background but at the same time work his way through 
this and social climb that's that's what i'm going for he was trying to social climb snow lacked the confidence that sejanus had sejanus and corylanus with the us at the end of their names are very different but how is sejanus supposed to know that one of the arguments i see a lot is that sejanus was manipulated by snow and he fell for it and how could sejanus fall for snow's manipulations that along the lines of that but how can you tell me as the audience that you wouldn't fall for someone like corylanus snow and his charisma how are you supposed to know that he's lying? There is quite literally no reason in the books why Sejanus would not have trusted Coriolanus Snow. Every action Coriolanus took towards Sejanus was one that on the surface was out of kindness and Sejanus was very obviously thinking of Coriolanus as a friend. Sejanus was never in the room when Coriolanus was saying that he wasn't friends with this district boy, that he wasn't associated with him. So Janus was not privy to Coriolanus's inner monologue either in Snow's reasoning for wanting to go after Sejanus, that because Sejanus was apparently associated by all the adults in the room with Coriolanus, that he had to constantly be saving Sejanus and making sure he was in line and not to mention, Coriolanus saw that the Plinth family wealth and that Sejanus had all this wealth that could benefit Snow in the future. Coriolanus was constantly saving Sejanus from danger, constantly calling him his friend, in fact, his brother. Snow went into the arena to retrieve Sejanus. Sejanus had no idea that Dr. Gore was the one who told Snow to do that. In District 12, Coriolanus goes after Sejanus and protects him from committing treason protects him from Billy Torp and all the people that he, he's associated with. You can't tell me that you wouldn't fall for that too. I personally would. I could admit my faults. But can you admit your faults? Because honestly, I feel like I could easily be manipulated into a cult. Which is kind of concerning, but you know, Coriolanus, if it was someone like Coriolanus, I'd fall for it, you know? If it was led by Snow, I think I'd fall for it, that thinking that he actually cared about me. If he acted the same way that he acted towards Sejanus, I would think that he was actually my friend. And not realizing he was be being manipulated by Snow, it really tells us a lot about Sejanus's character, that he thinks that everyone is going to think the same way that he does. So Janus obviously wants justice and he doesn't want the games con to continue and he thinks he goes around it, from what we see from Snow's perspective he goes around thinking that everyone hates the games and has some form of conscience following them around when they're contributing to the games. On the other hand Snow is telling us in his inner monologue in the books that he thinks Sejanus is playing a game or being ridiculous because he isn't playing a game like everyone else is, thinking that Sejanus is the odd one out, not only because he's district, but, but because everyone else wants to get ahead and that Sejanus is already ahead because of the Plinth family wealth. Another thing that makes Sejanus a lot better than Snow is that he's district. And that's not to say capital people are necessarily bad or inherently bad in the same way that Katniss believes in the original trilogy that they're all inherently bad and then she discovers that no in fact that they're not all bad because she meets a lot of capital people that she bonds with and understands that they a lot of them think the games are wrong too. I'm saying Sejanus is district and that makes him a better person because he grew up in the capital and still managed to survive and keep his values and beliefs throughout maybe I think it'd, it'd be about 10 years that he lived in the district. It was either when he was five or eight he moved to the capital from District 2 and he still became a really good person being surrounded by all of these capital people. First of all because he was raised right by his ma plinth and that he had money from his father. It means Sejanus is incredibly strong-willed to be able to survive the capital. One part of Sejanus's character that I absolutely loved was when he spread, I believe it was breadcrumbs on Marcus's body uh, when he died, when Sejanus snuck into the arena and after Marcus had died and Coriolanus Snow had to go and retrieve him. Sprinkling breadcrumbs was essentially District 2's version of a proper send-off. And he cared enough about Marcus, Marcus who he hadn't seen since childhood after Sejanus moved to the capital, Marcus stayed back in District 2. For those of you who don't remember, Marcus and Sejanus were classmates when they were younger. Despite not seeing each other for quite a while, Sejanus still respected Marcus enough to be able to give him a proper send-off. He still cared enough to give him that send-off. 
showing how he was not manipulated by the capital and he didn't he refused to conform to the rest of Pan Am. A very important part of Sejanus's character is that he never killed anyone, unlike a particular character by the name of Coriolanus Snow, who, ki who would eventually kill thousands. But in the prequel, Snow only killed, I think, a total of maybe five people by the end of the prequel. Sejanus never killed anyone. And I feel like compared to our main character that a lot of people are making excuse excuses for, Sejanus is quite a good person. In fact, a phenomenal character because he never killed anyone. Oh my God. Making excuses for a murderer over here in the fandom. Guys, really calm down and stop making excuses for Snow. I know a lot of the discourse when the prequel movie came out was to do with how Sejanus was this spoiled rich kid that expected to get out of everything because of his money, which was not the case because that was actually, surprise, surprise, the inner monologue of Snow and the perspective of Snow. You're understanding Sejanus' character through the lens, through the eyes of Coriolanus Snow. Snow himself says in the books that Sejanus could get out of anything. If he could write a letter to the Plinth family, he could probably get Sejanus out of District 12 and out of prison before he gets executed because of all the money that the Plinth family has. You were literally seeing it through the eyes of Coriolanus Snow and not from the perspective of Sejanus. His wealth definitely g gave him a lot more privilege, but it doesn't mean he was relying on that. Sejanus was just making a lot of impulsive decisions. And that brings me to my next and final part is that Sejanus made a lot of impulsive decisions in a similar fashion to Katniss Everdeen in the original trilogy. Sejanus made some mistakes. Sejanus could have gone about everything he was doing in a very different manner that would have helped a lot more and not gotten him killed. However, Katniss did the same thing. She was very impulsive and she didn't think things through before she acted on them. Because both of them were teenagers at the time. The only difference between the two characters is the odds were on the side of Katniss, they just weren't on the side of Sejanus. May the odds be ever in your favor, except the odds were not in the favor of Sejanus in the prequel. At any other point in the 75 years that the Hunger Games were going on, he might as well have survived and not been executed for his actions. He might have joined a rebel group for all we know and actually made a difference with all the money and privilege that he had. All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. Please let me know in the comments down below what you think of Sejanus and don't make any excuses for Snow, please. And thank you. Um, you're allowed to find Tom Blythe attractive, but not Snow. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, so I'd greatly appreciate if you did subscribe. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but I have been CJ and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.